PCA is based on the covariance matrix. Uh, co covariance is sensitive to individual large values. So one really, one, one really simple way to mess up your PCA is to take a single attribute and uh, multiply it by a big constant, right? So uh, for example, you know, maybe I have height of people uh, in my data set and I'm gonna represent height of people in micrometers. So everybody, everybody will have a really big height if, if you measure it in micrometers. Uh, and uh, what that means is all the attributes will be very, very large. And when PCA, uh, when, when you compute covariance, it will look like that dimension, the height, is the dimension of the dominant variance. That dimension will swamp everything that you have in your data, and height will become a principal component in and of itself, right? Whether that's useful or not, uh, that's questionable. So that's not desirable. How do you get around it? Typically, in addition to centering the data, you uh, normalize it to unit variance, right? So for each attribute, you subtract the mean divided by the standard deviation. So now you have zero mean unit variance uh, data. <coughs> Uh, so that gets around this problem. Um, another problem which you cannot get around is uh, PCA assumes that the space is uh, linear, the underlying space. So in one dimension it's a straight line, in two dimensions it's a, it's a sheet. And that of course doesn't help you. Uh, so here you have two dimensional data, uh, but they seem to be straddling a one dimensional curve. So PCA cannot find a curve, it cannot find a manifold, it will try to find a single direction. Uh, in which the data has the most variance. So uh, this just goes to say that it's not going to magically work on all data sets. For some data sets uh, where the data is manifold structured, doing it linearly makes no sense at all. Okay. Um, now, uh, so PCA is used for reducing dimensionality. A lot of the time what you want to do is you take your reduced dimensional data and stick it into a classifier. Uh, PCA can sometimes help because it gives your classifier more redundancy. It can sometimes hurt really badly. Right? And why can it hurt? It can hurt because basically it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't see the class labels when it's doing the decomposition. It just looks at the coordinates of the data points. So the dimensions that it picks could be very unfortunate for a particular class distribution. So suppose I have uh, suppose I have these data points and I have two classes, the green class and the red class. Right. Now PCA would pick the dimension of the greatest variance. So it would pick this dimension and it would project all the points to this dimension. And once you do that, the classes are pretty jumbled up. Right. So once you have done the projection, every point is just represented by one number. So maybe this is 1, maybe this is 3, 5, 5 and a half, 6, and so on. There is no way to separate the red and the green in this one dimension, no matter what you do. Uh, now, if you picked a different dimension, say a dimension like that, then the data actually becomes fully separable. Right? So, uh, but PCA will not give that to you. PCA will not pick that dimension because it doesn't see the colors. It only sees where the data points are in space. It looks for variance. Yes? Could you use, if, if it's a training set, for example, could you use the class label uh, with PCA, so make a two-dimensional problem out of it, and then run PCA? No. Uh, well, if you want to do something like that, it's on the next slide. But turning into three dimensions won't, uh, it, it, it won't, it won't work. Um, <clears throat> so uh, now there is a technique that looks pretty much identical to PCA that tries to do exactly what you want to do, which is take advantage of class labels, right? So this is linear discriminant analysis. And the basic idea there is uh, PCA looks for a dimension of the greatest variance. Uh, LDA looks for an interesting dimension such that when you project to that dimension, you maximize the difference between the means of the classes normalized by their variances. So you don't try to find a dimension of the greatest variance, that would be that. Right? Uh, what you do is you try to find the dimension where sort of once you project to it, there is the greatest separation between the, uh, between the green class right, and, and the red class. Now, um, <coughs> So uh, th this is basically a version of PCA that tries to 
reduce the dimensionality in the way that is most useful for a classifier. Uh, now, it does that by making several assumptions. So it assumes that the data is uh, Gaussian, and it assumes that you have a simple boundary between the data points. So you could always come up with counterexamples, right? This is not bulletproof. Uh, there, you, you can come up with distributions of data where, uh, where, where LDA is going to give uh, ba a bad projection and PCA will actually give a better projection. So here's one example. If your data was distributed like that, so uh, basically your red class had this mean uh, and it, it had a rel relatively circular looking Gaussian and then the uh, and then the green class had elongated Gaussian that way, right? So um, if you did LDA projection, LDA would look for the greatest difference between the means normalized by the variances, so it'll likely pick that direction, right? That's, that's the direction that allows you to separate the means as far as possible. And of course, in this case, you can't separate the means very far. So if the separating information is not in the means, then LDA is not going to pick a very good, uh, a very good projection. PCA, on the other hand, uh, would project to the greatest variance in the data. So that's what the projection would look like for PCA. Uh, this would be the red class. This would be the green class. You cannot separate them with a single threshold. But if you had a nonlinear classifier, it would have no problem picking out the greens from the reds. So in this case, if you had a powerful classifier, uh, a PCA projection would actually be better than uh, an LDA projection. So you can always, uh, basically, all I'm trying to say is LDA is not foolproof. You're not guaranteed to get higher classification accuracy if you run LDA, just like with PCA. Sometimes it'll help, sometimes it won't help. You have to experiment and see what it gives you. Okay.